Okay. I wanted to address a little bit of, I was at the Plain Air <coughs> Convention and I got introduced to a couple of panels that I wanted to share with you. And then it, it kind of dawned on me and I thought, you know, I might as well talk to you guys a little bit about painting panels. For those of you who want to come paint outdoors, for the, some of you that want to try painting on panels, um, most of the time artists that paint outdoors, they work on wooden panels or wooden panels covered with canvas. Some of you know them as canvas boards. And normally artists work on those because when you're standing outside, you can't have light coming through your canvas. Okay, so canvas boards are ideal. Furthermore, canvas boards can be easily put into a box. They have a drying box and you can put canvas boards into a box and you can put 30 or 40 paintings in a box and close them up and travel with them. So you have to kind of think about when you're painting outdoors, what you're going to do, how you're going to store it. One of my secrets behind being a successful outdoor painter is to make sure that you stick with one size. So I usually say 9 by 12 or 12 by 16. Okay, those are a good, simple size. And just choose one. It's a lot easier if you say I'm going to be a 9 by 12 artist or even an 8 by 10 artist or even a 5 by 7 artist. If you're going to go out and paint outdoors and you're going to use the little Prashad boxes and you want to be a little 5 by 5 by 7, then just stick with that. And so you have your little thumb box and you paint your little 5 by 7. You've got your little box that you put everything. But when you start switching sizes, then, then you have different boxes and before you know it you have different easels and but yeah, just crazy. So what you want to do is you want to start off choosing 9 by 12s or 12 by 16s. Then um, there's a couple ways that you can go about doing it. You can go the inexpensive route and you just go down to the Michaels and you buy these like 10 for a dollar or whatever like that. These are like the bottom line. There's usually cardboard inside with canvas on them. Um, they're ideal. They're acrylic, they're acrylic primed uh, cardboard inside. They have a, a life of about 10 or 15 years. My father, when he used to paint as a young man, um, all of his canvas boards, when I inherited them, were all oh, twisted and all rotten. They all actually got a mold on them. And so they were, they were pretty much destroyed. Uh, Yesterday I had a student that decided, oh, you know, he wanted to practice. And so he went into his shed in the house that he bought and the people prior to him left some masonite panels with some paint on them. And so he went in and painted on it and he painted like the best painting he'd ever painted on it. And, and you know, this big warped kind of thing. I said, why did you do that? He says, well, it's just a practice. And I go, you never know when it's going to be your Mona Lisa. So you always want to make sure that you have really quality stuff. And these canvas boards, although they're deceiving, it's nice to I, you know, buy several of them for inexpensively, um, they're not really the most ideal thing. Okay. Now, masonite isn't anything that they actually manufacture anymore. They've, it's actually chipboard or hardboard. Masonite was actually produced in 1924, and it was uh, a good industrial product. Um, and then they, what they would do is they have tempered and untempered. Tempered, um, it means that they've actually added oil to it to kind of make it a little bit more water resistant. That's not what you want in your boards. You want untempered masonite boards. And it's real simple. You can go down to the hardware store. If you're a 9 by 12 artist, you can go down to one of the hardware stores that are a little higher end. You can get a whole sheet of it. Yeah, and they'll cut it to whatever size. Because you're going to be a 9 by 12, so all of them are going to be 9 by 12s. But the main thing is, is you want to get untempered masonite boards. But they're very inexpensive. But you can get a little higher grade, a little heavier. This is a little heavier one. And notice it has the texture on that. That kind of helps it from warping. Um, but the main size is you want to have a smooth side. So how you go about doing this is usually you will get all of your boards cut and you'll lay them on a table. And then you will go to the art store and you will buy gesso. Gesso. The thing I hate the most in the world. I remember when I was a young guy in San Francisco, I went to an art show and down at the wharf and they showed this lady, this, some artist painting. 
a can of gesso, and she was throwing it across the studio. And I said, I relate to her. <laughs> gesso, actually, gesso that you buy in a, in a jar that's labeled gesso, isn't really gesso. It isn't really the primer that the old masters used. The old masters used to use a primer um, that was called gesso, but it actually was made out of marble dust, rabbit skin glue, and titanium white. Okay? And they mixed that up and um, gessoed their, their canvases. Now the difference is, is that the gesso that's made today is actually latex paint. Okay, it's acrylic. It's an acrylic base. Um, it is almost like, how, or it's just like house paint. Okay, it really isn't a really, it's an acrylic base paint. The gesso that they used to use, I mean, if you can imagine marble dust, okay, and rabbit skin glue, which is, which is a kind of a, a, a porous material, and both of them mixed together with white, you get a finish like bisque. And now imagine painting on a latex panel, like a door panel, like in your bathroom, mm -hmm. or painting on a surface like bisque. You would get a totally different effect. The old gessos used to absorb paint much better than the new ones. Um, so what I do is, is, you know, a lot of artists, they love gesso. They gesso everything. You can get textures with it. You know, I, I like more of a smooth kind of finish on it, but if I'm going that route, um, well, first thing, you know, you take a panel like this and you take your gesso and you just kind of paint it on. And then gesso has a tendency to be a little bit on the thick side, so you might add a little bit of water to it, kind of smooth it out. And I always find with gesso is that you've got to sand it down, you know, to kind of finish it. So you spend a lot of time trying to get that bisque quality that you would with the other marble dust the thing with the, the marble dust and rabbit skin glue is that as you sand, it, because it's kind of porous to begin with, it gets this, it just, it, it comes off just beautifully like, like you're, you're, you're finishing marble. Um, so it's really a wonderful thing. You can't get that from the latex paint. So you're putting gesso on, it's like, uh, and you dry, and then you got these papers. So then you have to go take sandpaper and you start rubbing it. And then meanwhile, you know, you've set yourself up to go out and paint outdoors and all of a sudden you're sitting all day in the basement, sitting here fighting your gesso panels and messing with that. So I just kind of thought, hmm, gesso, latex, why not? So I went to the hardware store and got automotive primer. Rust-Oleum. This is what I use. Rust-Oleum in a can. It comes gray or white and I just take this and you can, the wonderful thing about this, you could be literally on location and you grab a hold of one of your panels, take the spray can, shake it up, flip it, flip it, spray it. It dries so fast and it gives you this wonderful surface, okay, and you're done. So you don't even have to mess with gesso. If you're going to mess with, you know, I'm a traditionalist, and we're going to get into some traditional stuff here pretty soon. But I'm a traditionalist, and if you're going to use latex paint, then make your life easier and spray on primer. It works absolutely wonderful. And you do get a nicer finish than you do with the paintbrush. So that's one way to kind of... It's a fast way, yeah? It's a fast way, yes. And you don't have to deal with all of the mess that goes along with that.